Now let's do a quick review of the critique that I did based on a commentary from Nahum chapter 1 and 2. Our key verse is verse 3. The shield of his mighty men is red. His soldiers are clothed in scarlet. The chariots come with flashing metal on the day he musters them. The cypress spears are brandished. Now the author of the commentary says about this verse, The embodiment of Yahweh is through his mighty men, the warriors. The color from the vine branches continues reversal motif. The color of the fruit of the vine branches is now on the shields. Both Assyrians and Babylonians could be dressed in scarlet and therefore add to the confusion of the scene. Now we notice immediately that the author of this commentary references prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel when trying to prove a point about something that the prophet Nahum is saying about a reversal motif. Now, in some of the commentaries that I read, color and shields can be used to ev evoke fear. But let's take a look in Logos and see what it has to say about the association between color, shields, and this reversal motif. So we can right-click on the word red to find out more about how this uh, lemma is commonly used. And so once we do that, we change this to Lexham Hebrew Bible, and we get this here. And we see that this word for red is commonly used in reference to animal skins. Many references are found in Exodus. We scroll down and we find our reference here in Nahum. So, when I did further research about uh, the way in which the author of the commentary sees these colors being used, I looked up passages from Ezekiel, and I noticed that in this one particular commentary, blue and these colors, in general, are associated with glory. So the reversal that is happening is one of the Assyrian army, which had been characterized by uh, domination, which is now being turned into desolation. We scroll down in our passage and we see that this reversal is taking place before our eyes. We have this threefold desolation, desolation, desolation. A wonderful uh, assonance brought out <clears throat> by the writer of our commentary. But later on, we see that whereas the author of the commentary went to Ezekiel and Isaiah, to try to point out that there was confusion, um, we see that we can re resolve this confusion on the battlefield, not necessarily by going to Ezekiel or Isaiah to see what they have to say about the colors in this passage, but we can go back to the passage in Nahum. And so when we do that, we, we notice that Whereas there's rhetorical questions going on here in uh, verses 11 and 12, these questions are clarified in verse 13. Now, we would be missing a lot if we didn't recognize that in the genre of poetry, that this structure here is setting up uh, a culmination where we have a parallel verb structure. We have the image of these lions that are being killed and prey being removed from the earth and bookends to it are the actions of the Lord exacting his vengeance upon Nineveh. He sends their chariots up in smoke and their voices are heard no more. And so in this way we find that no matter where whether there was a confusion on the battlefield between Assyrians and Babylonians wearing red or not, we see that the confusion is clarified when the Lord takes decisive action.